Here we are in round one, winning the die roll, and we are going to play first. This hand is, well, I was going to say it's slow, but it actually isn't that slow. We can turn one spiral tracer, then promenade, and then we can go from there. So, not a mulligan, the promenade certainly helping out. Our opponent is keeping his hand, and we aren't going to hold back spiral tracer just to use the guild mage. The guild mage is going to provide a lot of value if it survives anyway. And that way we have the Spire Tracer in play to interact with his board or deal some damage. So now most of our mana is fixed already thanks to the Promenade. And we can see how we continue. I would like to play the, play the Tower Drake because playing and utilizing the guild mage doesn't really work on curve so we would we would just drop the tower deck on four mana not really uh, get anywhere with that so i'm just going to run this out and then hopefully get some value out of the guild mage later on one problem is that we could be lacking blue mana with the guild mage if we draw a blue creature and want to put a counter on it. But hopefully we can we can work things out. Okay, interesting. Our opponent plays a 4-3 here. Which is a lot more aggressive than the incursion specialist he played. So we did draw Ivy Lane Denizen. We have already played our Spire Tracer, but uh, that's kind of like the perfect card to combine with Zamek Guild Mage. And we are going to be forced to block the Flayla at some point, but we can't with our evasive creatures. So uh, next turn we are probably going to take some damage. If the Incursion Specialist attacks, we are probably forced to block it with, with the Denizen. Uh, we are losing to Electricry um, very badly, but don't really see how we can prevent that. Electric Hero would, would be a blowout anyway, so I'm just going to run into it. So from here on, drawing drawing an island is fine, and drawing spells is also going to be fine. There aren't that many cards that we are unhappy to see now. Carnage Gladiator. Simic Guildgate is kind of awkward but it's still reasonable. So we are going to have one mana to activate the Tower Drake once we've played the Guild Mage. And it might just be reasonable to make the Tower Drake a 3-2 in order to block the Hellhole Flailer. Because making the Ivalane Denizen a 3-4 means that it could trade with the Hello Flailer, but it also it's our main chance of getting plus one plus one counters onto creatures. So Yeah, I, I think we have to go on the defensive here a little bit. This this doesn't look like a board that's really raceable. We still have to figure out what to do with Carnage Gladiator, so we aren't out of the out of the woods yet. And our opponent is most likely just going to swing with the gladiator and then put us in a in a pretty bad spot. If he ever taps the swamp, then we can block the gladiator, so or if we draw a trick, then we can also block and then respond to it to to the regeneration. Let's see what happens here. We lose one. I think it's most likely that our opponent just lets the damage resolve. He doesn't really have a reason to sacrifice the flailer here. 
but we have a, a reasonable board against the Carnage Gladiator, so isn't unreasonable. Yeah, that's kind of awkward because Spire Tracer is going to lose to um it's going to die to Bomber Core if we don't draw a creature that also gives us a counter. So let's see, we can just keep open Transkill Promenade and draw two cards with this. Not what I want to be doing, but it's the card we drew, so let's let's try to make the most out of it. If Bomber Core attacks and Incursion Specialist attacks, we can actually just kill the Bomber Core with our block, so it isn't the worst. Wow. That's pretty brutal. And we would have drawn insane. We would have drawn a Disciple of the Old Ways, putting a counter on something with a red mana in play, and then a Jace for, for the next turn. But instead we get nothing. So, yeah, that's kind of rough. Could have stayed home there with the Spire Tracer. Because if our opponent attacks with everything, then it's pretty good for... Well, it's not good for us, but now he can just attack with only the Gladiator, and it's not, not a good spot for us. That Psychic Strike was absolutely insane. Otherwise, I would have uh, we would have basically drawn all the cards we needed to to turn this game around with the first striker holding back Carnage Gladiator. Okay, that means we are most likely dead. Don't know if our opponent has another spell. Uh, that would just make this attack lethal. Yeah, it looks like it. Or he's just relying on the on the ability of Carnage Gladiator. Rune Ring. Not going to cut it here. I'm just going to concede this. Don't see us winning. We we basically if he attacks with everything we we are dead. So yeah, that was uh, kind of unfortunate. We are playing a, a, some clunky cards that, of course, didn't really help us a lot here. But the fact that he had the counter spell was, was really unfortunate. Some of the blue cards are interesting. Nightwatch isn't horrible, but also not amazing. So, let's look at what we are working with here. I think only Last Thoughts is a card that we actively don't want. And the other cards are all fine or or pretty good um, on the play or on the draw. Runner's Bane might not work out to be super good, but I always want it in my deck. And I think Mutant Spray is a card that we always want as well. I think we should uh, bring in the Defender for the last thoughts and leave the rest as it is. And then hopefully we can manage to win. This hand is quite unkeepable. It's it would be nice with more lands, but that's true for almost any hand with only a single land. So let's keep those six. Hopefully, draw into a an island or just race our opponent with what we have here. We don't have the green on turn one, but we can play the Spire Tracer if we don't draw a land, or the Herald if we do. Okay, we did draw the land, so getting the Herald into play as fast as possible is going to deal more damage than the Spire Tracer is. And then we can still make the Spire Tracer six, uh, a 4-4 four, four with a give in order to race our opponent. He has a flyer as well, so Spire Tracer is a little worse. And here, sacrificing the Herald is just, it's just the best play. Okay. 
This could become quite an interesting race. Now, this might mean that he, our opponent doesn't have a another play for the turn. Or or another 2-drop, that's the alternative. Bomber core. Oh, that's pretty good. I think we just runners bay the Metropolis Sprite and play the Spire Tracer because we already know that we have give to make uh, Spire Tracer survive a Bomber Core trigger. So letting our opponent have his his 1-2 is better than having him keep the flyer. And I want to be as mana efficient as possible while not taking too much damage here. And I have a feeling that Runner's Bane, or we we already know that Runner's Bane doesn't kill his his best creatures, doesn't tap his best creatures. So I think that's that's fine. Okay, Pun didn't play anything here, so he might be sitting on uh, what's it called, Psychic Strike. I'm going to play this safe and not play my gift take because. I don't have much else, so I'm kind of reliant on that resolving, and I can't afford to play this into a removal spell or, or a counter he might have. The most difficult decision is going to be whether to fuse it or not. Horror of the Dim. That's somewhat of a problem. We drew a Disciple of the Old Ways, which we already know doesn't really do much against the horror, so it's kind of a dead draw. Now, playing Give on the Spire Tracer doesn't make a lot of sense because we know he has the horror now. So we could put it on the Centaur and get in for 7, bringing our opponent down to 6, forcing him to block the Centaur next turn or have an immediate answer to it. I think that's our, our best line. And then we can also play the Disciple. The alternative would be to try to draw um, to draw some additional cards here, but I don't think that's getting us very far. If we draw three here, then everything we have is basically dominated by his board, and we only bring him down to 12, so kind of like being more aggressive here. It also works out quite nicely that the, that the Centaur is now lethal, but given that we are facing a Grixis deck, there's a lot of cards he could have to punish us for, for putting the counters on the Centaur. A single Void Wielder would just crush us. Turn Burn. That was an interesting play. He turned the Centaur into a 0-1 um, a red weird token and dealt 2 damage to it. But it has uh, 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, so it actually survived. Pretty sure that's not what our opponent wanted to happen. So that was great for us, and we are drawing a few too much lands here, but um, that could have could easily just have given us the game. Now, these two are definitely attacking. If you attack with the Disciple, then the Bomber Core is going to chump lock the Centaur and the Horror is going to eat the Disciple, which is also worse against any kind of sacrifice effects you might have, so don't really see a reason to do that. Yeah, as expected, we, we get a chump block out of him. Uh, we are going to pass with our six lands. This game felt a lot more than I like uh, the gate crash drafts I've done. Although we were uh, very lucky that our opponent tried to turn burn 
our centaur there. If you assume that our opponent can deal with the centaur, then attacking with the disciple is, is pretty much suicidal. On the other hand, if he needs to chump lock the centaur, then we get um, reduce his outs by quite a bit. We are, we are looking to finish this game with evasion, evasion basically. So dealing an additional two here could be absolutely huge. I'm also still interested in playing around the Psychic Strike that our opponent might have. On the other hand, Elusive Crisis is a card that we could lose to a Psychic Strike without it being much of a problem. Now I think we just pass the turn. There's no reason to run out the Crisis, I think. Okay, yeah, that, that's a great deal for us. He just um, spent his 3-4 and an explosive impact to deal with the 6-6, six, six, and we still have Spire Tracer and Disciple of the Old Ways pressuring him. Oh boy. Sapphire Drake. So maybe Elusive Crisis would have been good, but we still don't know if he, if he was sitting on on a counter spell, so might have done this correctly or not, it's kind of hard to tell. We can force him to block the disciple here in order to get uh, make sure that Spire Tracer resolves, uh, not resolves, but connects and to bring him down to one. And then we still have Spire Tracer and Elusive Craces. Basically, we are sacrificing. Disciple of the Old Whales to deal one damage to make sure that the crisis is lethal. I think that's worth it. If he has a, an Electricery, it's bad, but we still have an, a way to win this game with the crisis. Of course, the Anemone is not the card that we want to be drawing when we are actually trying to uh, race him here, but they did evolve the crisis, so it wasn't wasn't all that bad. Okay, that worked out. So, don't think there is much that we can do. We still have the last thoughts and the injunction, but in this format, it's kind of difficult to tell how the games are going to uh, develop. Uh, I think that our main deck is built quite well and. It's probably correct not to have the, not to have the last thoughts in the in the deck after boarding. Although the anemones haven't impressed me a lot, so it's kind of difficult to say. We are going to be on the draw, and we know that he has the four three unleasher and the four two guy, which means that anemones is great once it has evolved once. The only question is if that's realistic or not. Might just be better to to go for one of these cards, because if we are winning, then well, if we are ahead on the board, then both of these are fine. Hmm. I'm just going to keep it like this. I think the anemones are are fine in this matchup. Another interesting hand. We have the Transcult Promenade to save us once again. So, not a mulligan. And, hey. <laughs> So, we are playing against a fan, it looks like. I didn't read the chat, so sorry for responding so late. Now we're looking at a curve of turn 3 Guild Mage, turn 4 Rune Wing, and then we have the Rescue up. I almost clicked on the Promenade there, that would have been absolute disaster. And our opponent has a 2 drop as well, so things are already quite interesting. It's funny how if you have three islands, you always draw the fourth one, even though you have like an even distribution of basic lands in your deck. Up 
opponent mulligan to six and then cap. So his mana base looks looks good at least. Drew a forest, so we can definitely play that. Guild Mage isn't amazing, but it's also not bad, so we aren't taking too much damage here, which is nice. Uh, we can just drop the Rune Wing, and it's going to be a very good blocker. Just hoping that he ha doesn't have the 4-2 Regenerator. That would be kind of tough. Okay, there it is. So... We could just try to Dramatic Rescue the Gladiator. But I think we need to get the Rune Wing into play first and draw an additional card, see what, what that gives us. The Carnage Gladiator is very tough to beat for um, a deck like ours. Its ability is insane against us and we are Simic splashing white, so we don't have a lot of ways to actually deal with the Gladiator itself. Disciple of the Old Ways would be a nice card to have once again. We could even make it a 3-3 with the help of the Guild Mage. We're definitely going to see an attack here. The question is with which creatures. Okay, everything. So Vombacor is most likely going to ping the Zamek Guild Mage. And that means that if we block if we block the Vombacor with Zamek Guild Mage. Um, we lose it, so that's not really an option. If we block Bombocore with Rune Wing, we keep the Rune Wing, but we take uh, the most amount of damage here, and we don't get to see the, see the next card, which we could actually use uh, quite well. On the other hand, I want uh, to be able to block next turn, force him to regenerate, and then Dramatic Rescue the Carnage Gladiator. So I'm actually... I'm thinking that we can take some extra damage here from... from uh, looking at, at our hand. Potentially punishing him a little bit. For his aggressiveness. Okay, he has another Bomber Core. That's interesting because a second uh, having two in play would have been very good also. Frostburn weird. That's interesting. So... Yeah, that's a crazy good card to draw. Let's see. If we play our island... Activate this... Play Frostburn Reared. It should be a 2-5, and that means we can fight with Carnage Gladiator. And I'm going to do it right now, because uh, I'm not going to risk him untapping and having anything to, pre to prevent that. I know that the Prosperin Riot itself kind of dominates uh, his uh, Carnage Gladiator, but it would be absolutely... Um, an absolute blowout, blowout if he has anything to um, mess with our plans. So I, this getting this card off the table is just too important for for my game plan. I'm all, also down to ten. So yeah, Frostbring Red was was insane there. Could have dropped the forest um, because I still had I, I had two green to spend, so I would have ended up with two islands and two forests in play. But 
shouldn't really make a difference. In fact, uh, having the having the f uh, islands in play is kind of good with Frostburn Weird. So I don't know what's up here, but I'm just going to block both of his creatures and then force him to show me something. Could be turn burn, but he only has four mana, so not too concerned. Okay, it's just turn. So once again, we have the counter on the Frostburn Weird saving our creature. I don't think that our opponent is using a turn burn to its full effect here. It is a kind of a weird interaction that the counters keep your creature alive, but this is exactly what happened in the in the previous game, so. Okay, I did experience some lag here, and our opponent noticed that he could have played that turn burn a, little, a bit better. Now we are in a dominating position here, we just have to be careful not to give too much away. The question is if we want to use the Guild Mage's ability um, to make the Crisis a 3 2, that doesn't sound bad, so. And then we can also play this a bit more aggressively, I think. I'm going to tell my opponent what went wrong. Okay, so now we can run out the crisis. It's going to be a 3-2 immediately. And I don't see our opponent killing us from what he has there. So let's just get in for damage. And if we see an attack with Bomber Core, we can still block it with Battering Crisis. We don't have much to lose, really. It's possible that there is something happening now, but I also don't want to lose to some combination of Blood Rush and being burned out by explosive impact when I have uh, such an overwhelming board position. Let's see, the weird deals 5, so we deal 9 here. Uh, we could hold back a creature just to be super safe. I'm going to keep open, not Dramatic Rescue, but the activation of the Guild Mage. And I could have played the Island instead of the Celestia Guild Gate as well. But, like I said, this, this game shouldn't be losable. Okay, good sport. And we win the match. That was uh, definitely being made a little bit easier by that turn burn play, but I'm not complaining, so uh, let's see how our Simic deck does in the semifinals.